It'll be one to go this time by. Coming to the green, buddy. Coming to the green. Let's go get him. Go, go, go. Dig, dig, dig. Go, 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 go. Get your motor running. Head out on the highway. In both series. That'd be cool. Go to the press box. Jeff Cluck from NASCAR scene. Um, Bob obviously looked pretty smart right now. Looked like a genius. Uh, if, if it didn't work out, um, probably a lot of people at home across America would have been saying, "What an idiot! Why did he do that? Why do you, you know with, with so much on the line? Why not just settle for a top five? Were you were you prepared up there to to take that on yourself? And, and if it didn't work out, and say, you know what, it, it's on me and and it's my decision. And Carl, would you? Would you have been mad or upset at Bob uh, if it didn't work out? Well, you know when I'm when I'm when I'm at work and I'm getting getting scolded by Jack, <laughs> my usual answer to him is I've got big shoulders, I can handle it. Um, so, it, you know, it, the decision was uh, you know not not blind. Um, we had a lot of data to to back the decision, so it's not like a whim that the decision was made. So don't, uh, you know, don't read too much into it. There was a lot of data put into it and a lot of conversation and, and a lot of analysis to make that decision. So, But at the end of the day, uh, had it not worked out for us, I've made poor decisions in the past, uh, and I, I bet I'll make poor decisions in the future. And uh, I'll live with them and learn from them and move on. And, yeah, I would be... Um I'm, I think you know, the way our relationship is, mine and Jack's and mine and Bob's and all of our crew guys, especially at this point in the season, um, we're all in this together. So, you know, if I do something and make a mistake that costs us something, you know, like at uh, Talladega or whatever, you know, my guys don't get down on me. And, um, you know, having guys like Jack and Bob and the guys around that, uh, that I know are harder on themselves than I could ever be, uh, that's very cool. So I, I wouldn't be mad at Bob if we'd run out of fuel. I, I mean, I know he wants to win just as bad or, or more badly than I do. Ed Hinton, ESPN.com. Carl, it looked like from about the halfway point on through the wreck on the back stretch with Montoya, you were like throwing haymakers at Jimmy's points lead, lapping cars with great regularity. You put him, you know, he was like third on the lead lap, and you put him all the way to eighth on the lead lap. Uh, a, were you consciously doing that, knowing how far back you were putting him? And also, does it bother you that that, that wreck there, that there's, there's a guy like Gilliland just, just – he got parked for that, by the way. Uh, uh, sort of a guy who's not a chaser interrupting the whole flow of the thing. Do you think that it just broke up the rhythm of your day that you would have really had a more overwhelming victory instead of having to win on mileage? Well, the way the world seems to work is that everything happens for a reason. And I, I can't imagine being upset at David Gilliland for uh, what he did because we were sitting here the big ring and a cowboy hat. So um, I think, you know, if he hadn't wrecked whoever he wrecked, it might have been different. But um, it is a good question, you know, because from the outside, I think that a lot of times people see it as simple as, you know, oh, hey, some guy made a mistake. He's not even racing for a championship or whatever. But let me tell you something. David Gilliland is a great race car driver. He's racing just as hard or harder than a, a lot of the guys out here because, uh, you know, he's racing for a sponsorship and for uh, for a ride. and. And, um, you know, I think you got to be careful to, uh, I believe, in this sport, you have to be careful pointing fingers and saying negative things about guys because we all make mistakes, every single one of us. So um, definitely, personally, I'm not mad at uh, David Gilland, and, and uh, I, I think he's a good guy. Press box. Okay, but Bob Margolis with Yahoo Sports. This one's for Jack. Jack, I'm not sure exactly what the formula you were going to use when you mentioned about having a mulligan race, but can we now consider this to be Jimmy Johnson's mulligan race and those points he lost be taken away? I see your smile. Well, that was certainly – he certainly gave back some, some, uh, some points that help us with our electrical problem that we had at uh, Charlotte and, and – uh, and with we had two problems we with throw away a deeper finish yeah we yeah we'd love to throw away a deeper finish than uh, we gave up more points than that twice obviously we still wouldn't be 100 points behind but uh i um uh, i find no glee in somebody else having trouble uh, 
you know, uh, certainly I don't wish uh, wish Jimmy Johnson or the 48 any ill will at all. Uh, we'll just go out, and if they'll decide to come down pit road when they shouldn't, and uh, caution will come out uh, when it hurts them the most. Well, most will. It won't certainly be because I put anybody up to anything. I'll just uh, I'll just uh, be happy to to realize the benefit of it. But the same as they've realized the benefit of our electrical problem when it occurred, and you know th those things you can't choreograph. You just you take what the uh, what cards the, the what plan what hand you're played, and and then you do the best you can with it. You know, uh, we were extraordinarily lucky, uh, not Carl because he wasn't there, but with Matt in 2003 and with, with uh, Kurt Busch in 2004. If, if, uh, if, the, if, the, if the luck hadn't been with us on both those uh, occasions, we wouldn't have won either one of those championships. So I, I don't deny Jimmy Johnson, uh, you know, a championship for having good fortune of not being caught up in David Gilland's wreck or not being caught up in Carl's wreck at, uh, at Talladega. Or, or not having a bad part in this car. But uh, you just uh, wait and see what happens, and, uh, and uh, when it goes against you, you you, you, gotta, you gotta suck it up and, and resolve to keep the faith and keep going. And when it works in your favor, he says, uh, you know, God bless Texas. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Lee Spencer, Fox Sports. Nice bling, Carl, Perfect. by the way. Um, you said last night after the nationwide race that you felt in your gut that it wasn't over, that you were, you know, you had a feeling that you could pull this off. I mean, you, you've got to have just tremendous confidence now going into Phoenix and Homestead. Yeah, I mean, those are two really great racetracks for us. I, I love them both. Phoenix is, I think, one of the most fun racetracks we go to. The, the driver can really make a difference there, and, uh, you know, it. it Sometimes comes down to, you know, calls by crew chiefs and stuff like that. So I, I really feel like that racetrack will be good. Homestead's a lot of fun. Forward weekend is always good for us. I mean, you know, Jack's had a ton of success there. So, so yeah, I still feel the same way. I, I, I think we're, uh, we're in a good spot right now. It's, uh, you know, I don't know who said it or who started, but sometimes it's easier to be playing catch up. You, you, know, you have a little fun with it. Uh, Reed. Uh, Reed Spencer with Sporting News. Uh, Carl, yesterday in the nationwide race, you took four tires late that seemed to work for you. Did that influence the decision to take four with about 70 to go um, in this race? And Jimmy said that he expected you to be able to shoot through traffic and get back up to the front pretty quickly. What was it that prevented you from doing that? You know, I don't know exactly what Bob was, uh, you know, what he was balancing there, uh, two tires or four tires. If our stop would have been about a second or a second and a half faster, I believe we would have come out in fourth position instead of um, sixth or seventh or wherever we ended up. And when you're, when the lap cars are on the inside, you know every position you give up is is really two positions because the lap cars were fast uh, tonight um, on the inside. So I think that what hurt us there was the these cars are a little tougher to drive than nationwide cars. There's a little more. You know the field's a little more stratified, or you know the the in the nationwide series the cars are there's more of a difference between them. And this series it's very close, so it's hard when you're you're back there in real dirty air following ten cars to uh, to make something happen. So I was a little bit surprised at how tough it was, but uh, you know that's what you have to expect in this series. 